One day in the famous city-state of Nippur, part of the ancient land of Sumer in Mesopotamia, a teacher asked his students to start a journal about their lives and their country. Nisaba, one of those students, is writing about the travels of her uncle, a trader. My uncle just returned from a long trip and he brought me a beautiful idol. I gave him a big hug. My uncle is a trader and he hasn't been home in a while. So we were all very excited to hear his tales of other lands. Trading is a hard job. You take lots of goods over land, rivers, and seas. It can be very dangerous, risky, and mysterious. Why would anyone want to do it? It all comes down to what we have and what other cultures have. We have lots of grain. Our land is fertile and better suited than any other in the region for growing grain and other crops. But it wasn't until we learned about irrigation that we had enough grain for ourselves, let alone anyone else. Once we were able to grow enough for ourselves, we found it was quite easy to have enough for others as well. At first, we traded for crops and goods between the city-states of our land. But eventually, we found that we needed goods from other lands in order to build our civilization. Our land has great supplies of grain and oil, but we have no forests at all. The people in India have lots of wood. Also rocks, gems, and my personal favorite, crafts, like my new idol. My people take our goods across the desert and over the sea to trade centers. A trade center is a central place where different civilizations meet to exchange goods. Tonight, Uncle told us all about his latest trade adventures across the sea. Uncle has been gone for over a month this time. He went all the way to the trade center of Dilmun, which is on an island in the Gulf. Because our town, Nippur, is in a central location on the Euphrates River, it's an important trading center for the whole region. People come in from the fields all over the area to sell their goods to traders, like my uncle. Some people will load as much as they can carry on their backs and haul it into Nippur for trade. For short journeys, it's not difficult to carry goods on your back. Some of the farmers have donkeys that they can use to bring their goods into trade. Using donkeys makes the trip shorter and lets farmers bring more goods at one time. Still other farmers have used the power of our rivers to travel with their goods. Our people have built lightweight boats called guffas. The guffas are made of canvas stretched over connected rods, then coated with tar to make them watertight. A guffa is easy to build and to maneuver. Its one drawback is that it can only travel with the flow of the river. It can't travel back upstream. Once the guffa is downstream, it must be taken apart and carried back upstream. No matter how they travel, the farmers must come to Nippur to trade their goods. The local people can either trade for goods that are available in the market, or they can trade for items that will be delivered to them later. That's often how my uncle trades for more exotic goods. He'll purchase oil from a local man and in return, give him a token that represents the copper that he will bring to the man later. That was the purpose of my uncle's last trip to Dilmun. He had received a huge load of grain from the king and had promised the king some valuable wood from India. My uncle says that no matter what, the journey from Nippur to Dilmun is always dangerous. Traveling by boat, they must navigate down to the mouth of the Euphrates where the river meets the gulf. This part of the journey is long, but the river water is calm and there are few dangers. The gulf is another story. The weather there is often very stormy and fierce pirates raid ships that travel those waters. Before entering the Gulf, my uncle must find a seafaring boat whose captain is willing to carry his grain to Dilmun. On this journey, the boat he finds is old and rickety, but he figures it will do. Pirates are always a concern. 
They'll try to steal my uncle's goods by boarding the boat while it's in the water. Or when it's docked along the shore at night. Uncle said that the pirates approached their boat one night, but their watchman sounded the alarm, and that scared the pirates off. Drinking water is another concern on the long trip. The boat is surrounded by water, of course, but because it's salt water, it isn't drinkable. The crew almost ran out of water, but just as they were getting worried, Dillman appeared in the distance. Dillman's beautiful date fields were a welcome sight to the crew who hadn't seen land for days. Boats from the Indus Valley, Oman, and Sumer were moving into and out of the port. As the boat tied up to the dock at Dillman, porters came to unload the grain and oils it carried. Uncle paid the boat owner with pieces of jewelry. Uncle had thought it would be easy to sell the grain, buy the wood, and begin his trip home. But he found that since his last visit, the king of Dilmun had become quite angry with the king of Nippur. He didn't know why, but the king of Dilmun had placed a tax on the sale of any goods from Nippur. Because of this tax, Uncle wouldn't be able to get all of the wood he'd been ordered to buy. Uncle appealed to the king of Dilmun to release him from this tax, but the king refused. My uncle decided to entertain the king with fine foods, beverages, and stories. By the end of the evening, the king agreed that uncle wouldn't have to pay a tax to sell his grain. By the middle of the next morning, he'd sold the grain and loaded a boat with wood from the Indus Valley for the return trip. Uncle was so happy with such a successful voyage. The overland route by donkey and cart can be even more dangerous than sea voyages. On a recent trip to the city-state of Mari, my uncle met Irin Sin. Irin Sin's family lives in Mari, and uncle was there visiting a temple. Irin Sin was loading up for a long trading journey, and my uncle was interested to talk with a fellow trader. Irin Sin invited my uncle to his home to share a meal and talk about their adventures. They had a lot in common. Trading across the land route has many of the same dangers as trading across the sea. You need to worry about the short supply of water and about losing your goods to thieves who will try to rob you. The cart at least makes overland trips easier. For that, the traders have to thank us Sumerians because we invented the wheel. Eden Sin's preparations were for a trip to Byblos on the Great Sea. He was taking examples of our most intricate textiles to sell. Textiles are any kind of woven, knitted, or knotted fabric. Our textiles are woven with fine wool from our sheep. Byblos is a beautiful port city located between Egypt and our land on the coast of the Great Sea. Byblos is a trade center for the region. And since it is a port, goods come into the city overland from Mari and from other lands along the Great Sea. Eden Sin is able to trade his fine textiles for scarab amulets, gold, and other metals from Egypt. Scarabs are insects that have a great deal of meaning to Egyptians. They believe that wearing a scarab amulet protects the wearer in this world and in the afterlife. Gold is mined in Egypt along the Nile River. The Egyptians value gold highly because of its ties to their sun god, Ra. Eden Sin's main interest has been in trading for Egyptian goods. The Canaanites of the region have the finest cedar wood he has ever seen, but it's too heavy to carry over the long route back to Mari. After a pleasant meal with Eden Sin and his family, my uncle set off on his journey back to Nippur, excited about the new places and people he had visited on his trading journey. Well, that concludes my journal entry. I think my teacher will like my uncle's story.